the goal. It could be too far. No, he's thinking. Oh, what a catch! It puts a spicy forehand out in front of Naomi Morsilla. Woo for the win in Canada. Darren Woo! Santos with the layout grab. Oh, that fantastic grab. The claws of Chapa. Canada just became the world champions. You're listening to the Huckin' A Podcast. Theo Juan here. Where am I? Kingston, Ontario. And I'm Danny Proby. Where am I? I'm in Parksville, BC. <laughs> Neither of us are where we're supposed to be. But we still make your Coast to Coast Guide to All Things Canadian Ultimate. I've been playing lots of Ultimate, my friend. What have you been up to in Kingston? You know, you're saying uh, Kingston is is not where I'm supposed to be, but now it is going to be my home True. for the next, uh, I don't know how many years, to be honest, but uh, yes, I'm here in the lovely city of Kingston, right by the water. So if you like water, come out to Kingston. You can do a lot of stuff there. Um, yeah, I've been just work- grinding, you know, embracing the grind. Hashtag uh, never stop working. I don't know. Grind don't know time. Hashtag, hashtag grind. Hashtag grind time. Yeah. Work grind like time couple 12 hour days over the weekend just trying to get things prepped up we had our first home game so yeah lots of or the first home game since i've been there so a lot going on got to see a really cool obstacle course where all the first year cadets have to do it and uh it's pretty intense got some cool pictures from it and uh, it's pretty intense i don't think i would ever do it it looks uh pretty hard so i don't know if i have the the mental fortitude to complete that thing uh you have to like crawl through mud there's like the you know the classic like wall climb where everyone yeah. has to get up the wall classic yeah. uh so it was, it was cool to see how teams were creatively trying to get everyone up the wall so. oh i love that stuff it's like a, an adult jungle gym sort of it was way more tiring well of course of course but kids don't get tired so as an adult maybe you get more tired but that's pretty cool i would definitely be keen to try that or like have an ultimate team go through something like that would be a pretty cool like a uh, team building thing at the beginning of the season giving me some ideas for you 24 stuff um oh gosh, they have to do an obstacle course to make the team actually. That's the tryout. Yeah, exactly. Can't whoever you get over the wall, that's your that's your those are your teammates. <laughs> so all the tall, <laughs> like thin kids make it. <laughs> anyway, speaking of tryouts and speaking of U24, that's a lot of the what I've been doing lately has been kind of going over all the applications of people that did apply. Way more people applied than we thought. We thought we were gonna build invite most everybody but especially if you're on in ontario and you're open matching like that list got had to get like shrunk down a lot so there's basically like players that have played tc before or like played for their sit for like a top club team that competes in like the u.s series or in one category and then there's this huge bubble of players that were either on a smaller town's a team or a big city's b team they're kind of like right on that cusp. There was like 50 athletes in that category. So the whole process was really challenging. So if you're listening to this and you did not get an invite to tryouts, you're not alone. There was quite a few people. And um, it doesn't mean that you're not a great player, that we just had to be really selective uh, and stuff when we were checking references and everything. So that's all I have to say about that. Traffic competed in regionals this weekend. Um, and it was really fun for me personally. It was one of my favorite tournaments i've ever played in um for the vibes and for how i feel like i played like of course i make mistakes but i felt like i my huck game was on um and it was a good time o-line we only got broken three times for the whole weekend which i thought was pretty neat yeah not bad we did turn it a lot that's that's really good that's really good come on that's we turned it a lot we should have got well we could have got broken a lot more than that like against schwa and stuff but our O line's actually surprisingly good at defense, so we get it back a lot when we turn it. Or other teams' D lines are not good at offense. I'm not sure. You decide. Yeah, we're gonna hear more about that. We're gonna jump into the news, talk regionals, some interesting results. I think some of you already know about it, but we've got to talk about the news. Uh, we'll see you right there. We now have breaking news. Welcome to your news section. We're gonna bring you. All of the action that happened, it was a busy weekend, so I'm just going to dive right into it. I mean, I obviously said that U24 invites were sent out, so the first tryout's coming up soon, Thanksgiving weekend in Ottawa, and then the following tryout's going to be in Vancouver, 
in November. So looking forward to that. It's going to be awesome. Keep training, keep your bodies healthy if at all possible. So regionals results. We're talking club ultimate first. So we're going to go into the Northwest where I was in attendance. I didn't get to see a lot of the men's division or the open division because they were actually at a different field site, but I was able to watch a bit of one of Furious's games and they looked pretty good, but Furious goes two and two in pool play. So they start off their entire tournament with a loss to Darkstar, which is a team from Eugene, Oregon. So a big surprise. I know on Deep Look, they talked about how this was like the first big surprise that kind of came across their desks where they're like, whoop, it's going to be an interesting weekend because Furious should not lose to this team. So they also lost to Sakai. It didn't end up really mattering that Darkstar game because whether they finished second or third in their pool, they still had a similar level of crossover. So it wasn't like the dagger in the whatever, you know, nail in the coffin. That's the thing I wanted to say. So they do what they do need to do in the rest of their games. So they end up beating Emerald City 15-8. And then in the game to go to the game to go, they're playing against Pando, which is a really good team. And this is the game I was watching. And Furious starts up three breaks. So they got a nice comfortable lead kind of at the beginning and they kind of coasted that out to win 13-11 at the end of the game. So they found themselves in the game to go against Rhino. This is kind of exactly how they imagined it would all go but they end up losing 11 to 15. So Rhino ends up taking the second bid out of that region. Furious finishes third. If they had a third bid, Furious would likely be the one taking it. So it's really unfortunate for them that their season is over. Theo, do you have any thoughts, well wishes to this Furious Jorge squad? It's the reverse of uh, chasing Sarasota is all I got to say. Yeah. We talked about that documentary. It's a little reverse action here. I know, Furious, you've been Rhino this year, but Rhino seems to have gone the best of you, like, you know, at Walk and, and here. So um, sometimes the team, I, I'm not saying this is true, but sometimes the team has, like, the mental, like, oh, we're just going to beat this team. The other team's like, oh, no, we're playing so-and-so again. I don't know if it's the case here, but sometimes that happens, especially with regional rivals, and you play them, like, at an early season tournament, you play that world, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, tough. Um, yeah, I think that Furious is... I haven't listened to that Deep Look episode. It just like dropped an hour ago. So good on you for listening to it. Um, <laughs> that's good. That's the prep right there that we need. But um, yeah, I think they are. Uh, they probably said this, Charlie and Keith, but they are probably the best team not at Nationals, in my opinion. Probably like one of the... the, the Maybe Dig. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll get to them. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> Furious and Dig, probably the two best teams not at Nationals. On and, the open side. Yeah. On the open side, at least. So... Yeah. Tough for them, that's for sure. Totally tough. I think it, it's sad because I think that the the culture of that team is really strong right now. I think they're they're vibing really well. They're just missing a kind of key components to kind of bring that to the next level. Key component being height. They are always seemingly smaller than the teams are playing against. So hopefully they can recruit some tall boys to their team. So on the women's side, three beds, three clear top teams. It was a pretty comfortable tournament for those three top teams. So uh, Traffic, Riot, and Schwa all earned bids, and we're all looking to keep those bids. So Traffic went in as the number one seed. Their first game against Schwa ended up being really important. So whoever won this Schwa game, assuming both teams would win the rest of the games in their pool, whoever won that game would see Underground as the semifinal matchup to lock a bid versus playing against Riot as the semifinal game to lock a bid. So the first game really mattered. So the strategy of traffic going into that game was to play the bench as if it's a tight nationals game. So to get the team ready for what that would look like and to get the team that's like pl the people that are playing on the field used to playing lots of points in a row potentially. And we ended up winning that game. Sorry, traffic ended up winning that game 13 to 7. That's like a pretty big win over a good team so feeling confident uh we roll through all the other teams and then we faced underground in semis traffic ended up beating them 15 to 6 so then we looked over the other field it was schwa versus riot very tight game i believe schwa ended up winning by one in that game and so we got to face schwa again so for finals we start down very first point we get broken we're like uh oh what's happening but our D-line just like slays all day. We only got broken that one time that game. We turned it a lot, as I said, but got it back. Um, 
And our D-line just likes having breakfast. So we ended up winning that game 14-10 and cinched the number one spot coming out of the Northwest region. So Drift, oh wait, I'll let you interject if you have any feelings and thoughts. You can just shake your head if you're, I mean, it's not that dramatic. So. Well, the dramatic is Schwa taking the second bid, though. Like, I know we're not a U.S. podcast here, but Riot has, uh, I mean, they got names you recognize, but they are not uh, doing so hot. Let's just say that. So that's my only no, I knew Schwa was the second best team just after yeah. having played both of them. They're, they're more uh, aggressive. I think they're faster, more dynamic from what I've seen. I think Riot has a lot of top, top talent at the top, and, but aren't as deep, so. Drift, first year team, sort of. I know Koish kind of existed at UCI last year, but New Vibe, a lot of the same players, but we'll say they're a first year team. So they have losses at this tournament to Seattle's end and traffic on day one, but they ended up having a very convincing win over Seattle Soul 13 to 2. So we love that. They ended up getting to see Swell from Utah. So it was a tight game, but they ended up losing 13 to 10. So they end up facing Seven Devils after that. And it looks like they won on Universe, which those games are super memorable. They're super important for programs to be able to kind of like finish out close games and, and come out on top. So a little bit of clutchness happening for that team. They end up finishing seventh overall. So good job, Drift. Super excited to have more women's teams popping up in, in BC that are like hopefully going to persist and, and you know, last because... There's definitely enough talent to be doing really well. Speaking of new BC teams, the Huckle Bears from Vancouver Island, Victoria, also a first year team. They have some UVic players. They have some community players. They did end up going winless on day one, but they had a really close game against Seven Devils where they lost by one. So this new team, it's they're there. They're ready to play. They're well coached. And... Yeah, again, a tough day one. I think one of the teams they were supposed to play the following day, like either forfeited or I don't know what happened, but the Hucklebears had no scheduled games on Sunday. So they just played their four pool play games and then they were done. And so I think there was a little bit of disappointment. And I totally understand as a developmental team in the women's division at a regional tournament, for them not to get any bracket games, or constellation games or anything on day two when they travel on a ferry and then they drive down, I think it's garbage. So I don't really know what happened behind the scenes. Like maybe it was a team that said that they couldn't play and they only had one game scheduled either way. I think that's bad on USA Ultimate's point part. They should have had at least two games on Sunday. So women's division, come on, what are you doing? What are you doing? Theo, tell me what you think about either Drift or Hucklebears. First of all, do you like the name Hucklebears? I, I I like the name Drift. I'm I'm gonna say that it's a hype name. I, I like both names. I am very disappointed for them because I'm looking at the USAU schedule, and as you mentioned, there is no. I'm not sure if it was scheduled and maybe scrapped or or what happened, but um, there is a seventh place bracket um, or like a seventh place game. So I don't know why there is no Ninals. You know, nine ninth know. place game. So I mean, um, field field space was an issue. Oh, it was okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, even so, like, as you mentioned, a team like Hucklebears, their first year team, they're trying to get some reps in. They're probably not going to regionals thinking, hey, we're going to take a bid here and go to USA Nats. But it's more like, hey, we're trying to build towards the future. Let's see how we can do at CUC 2023 when it's in our province. Let's get some reps in. So for sure, they got to be sad because that's the whole point of going is to get reps against teams that are you play a team that, you know, is a lot better than you. It's there's some development there, but you want to play teams kind of close to your skill level, and they weren't really able to do that on Sunday, at least. Yeah. Yeah. Moving on to the mixed division, Flag was kind of in a little mini pool. So they had wins in their first two games. They ended up playing a crossover game, which I heard some players say that it didn't matter, which I disagree with. I don't, maybe the player didn't know that much about it but they ended up losing or playing against mixtape and then they lost 15 to 9 i mean it didn't end up matter in the grand scheme of things because they ended up spoiler alert getting a bid so they ended up losing 15 9 it meant that their route was a bit tougher so they played pegasus first took an easy dub against them and then they faced bfg in semis so if they had beat mixtape the first time they would have faced moondog in semis which would have been an easier path to 
finals potentially. But anyways, it all didn't matter. They end up losing to BFG 15-9 again, and it sets them up to see Moondog for the bid game. This is kind of how we all thought it would go down. If you asked how I thought the tournament would go, I thought Mixtape would win, then BFG, then Red Flag, then Moondog. And it kind of shook out exactly like that. So the game was definitely super close. I believe Red Flag was down for most of the game and kind of pulled off some late game breaks and ended up winning. And you posted this, but they're the first mixed team since 2013. Is that right? Uh, You know, we might get fact checked on this, but I did look and Odyssey had made it in 2013 and I didn't, don't think I saw a Canadian team after that point. So um, yeah, I believe that is, uh, yeah, that's, that's the true fact. So um, yeah, first time, I mean, I didn't say this in the post, but I told you so to the audience. I told you, I said red flag would be the first Canadian mix team to make it. And I was right. So I'll take some. Yeah, uh, I know props. we were trying to convince Ulti world at the beginning of red flags inception that they were going to be good. And they're like, well, nah, nah, I don't know. And then they come second at work and then they win the, or they get a win the bid at this region. So you got to believe it. Okay. Congrats to Red Flag. Asterix. It was not without controversy. So we're a podcast that talks about Ultimate. People have actually asked us, like literally slid into our DMs, literally emailed us, emailed asking us, yeah. us to talk about this. It's definitely uncomfortable for me because these are a lot of players that I've played with, coached, whatever, um, to talk about something that's not so good about it. But we did this with Strike as well, so we're kind of like holding things accountable. Um, if you follow our ultimate on Reddit, you would have seen a couple different threads in a post about some dangerous plays that were happening and some dramatic things that were happening on the field, like a player literally walking off midpoint because they were frustrated with their own team. Um, like they they talked about that in the Reddit thread too. So everyone's like, "What is going on, Theo?" What do you feel about this? Oh, this is uh, like the like the strike episode. This is a tough topic, but we got to talk about it because that's part of our job here um, that we get paid millions and millions of dollars for. So many um, dollars. Yeah, like I, I had a chance to edit the game, the game to go in which the bid was discussed, um, sent it to Danny. So Danny's seen the bid as well. Um, I can only speak to the ones we saw in video because unfortunately uh, I wasn't there. So um yeah in, in the video um it does look like um the red flag player does undercut and does take out the legs of uh the person on moondog and from what we saw in the reddit post that person's not wasn't able to come back in the game and there's other mentions of in the thread of uh you know other incidents happening um like i said i can't comment on those incidents because i wasn't there and i tried to ask someone who's actually had boots on the ground and um, they re- they reference the video as well. So uh, this is our little plug also for Ulti World subs- subscriptions. You can the game is actually already <laughs> up. Um, you can actually watch it right now on Ulti World's video st- video website, video.ultiworld.com. Uh, you can check it out and and see for yourself uh, what you think. But uh, clearly, um, I had a chance also to commentate their game in the semis at Walk, which was uh, if you look at the comments, not the best game to watch. A lot of calls, uh, both teams, but Red Flag is obviously the team we're talking about. So um, we know also how they did in Spirit. So clearly there's, at least from the last two tournaments that we of note, there's like a trend happening. I'm not saying it's um, systemic or cultural per se. It could be, but we're noticing a trend. So that's something we're going to keep an eye out on as we go into USAU and see how they do there is is kind of my perspective on it uh clearly some things uh rub people the wrong way based on uh their reactions on reddit and even one about uh vancouver ultimately i didn't even know that was gonna be chimed in so that that came in today so well i just i'm personally frustrated because i feel like canadian ultimate spirit has been improving on the international stage and there's always those people that kind of come into the comments being like, oh, classic Canadian spirit. Or like, well, actually, Furious and Traffic did really well at Walk for Spirit. I know Red Flag was like second to last or whatever. They finished below nine in Spirit, which is definitely a problem. Um, but it's it's like if one American team is bad Spirit-wise, 
I don't just say, oh, classic Americans being bad at spirit. So it's pretty frustrating. Because yeah. like we're, we're actively trying to change that reputation. Um, so I, I think that also on the, the Reddit post, they were talking about it being a particular player when in fact it was actually two players that were kind of involved in these plays. So maybe that's a maybe it's better that it wasn't just one player doing it or maybe it's worse. I don't know. You can all decide for yourselves. But I was chatting with some people on Red Flag who agreed that they were bad vids. Like they weren't saying that they weren't. Um, they also said that in the their their bid game, there was tons of people watching and booing them and stuff. So they kind of got a little bit of uh, maybe anti-Canadian, maybe anti-Red Flag. We're not really sure um, what's going on there. I have been trying to chat with people from Red Flag and from these like Seattle teams like BFG and stuff. So just to get a little bit more information because I don't really want to talk too much and give any opinions about anything when I don't have all the facts. So hopefully we can chat with some red flag leadership and see um, what they're going to do about it because traffic, we have this thing. If we, somebody on our team makes a bad bid, we have consequences for that. So I'm just curious if red flag has anything like that kind of ready to go. I mean, the other wild story is a player just walking off the field. Like that's crazy. Like that is crazy. And that is that a is confirmed crazy. story, correct? That's not just like a, a myth it's confirmed. That, that did that did happen. So that I ain't is gonna insane. say who it was. Sorry. But somebody walked off. So yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna you, say who it was, but they walked off the and they yeah. finished that point six six players to seven. Yeah, and, and I'm looking at the comments, and of course there's one that says, Sounds like the Canadian spirit we became familiar with throughout both Womack and Walk. And I and I, I don't really agree with that. I mean, maybe I'm biased because I'm Canadian, but um a lot of the teams had good spirit as we talked about so i don't really think that's fair and once again it's easy to to do a, a, a blanket statement and i talked about it on the broadcast actually when i was asked this question um about like yeah teams wanting to do better and also like we got to leave like i'm not saying don't forget the past but you got to just also look at how they their future actions i said the same thing with strike and i'll say the same thing with red flag we'll look at uh, how they do um at usau and future tournaments so yeah developing story i guess we could say uh well yeah danny you, you got boots on the ground and uh where where did you say you are something be like not vancouver bc where parksville yeah you got boots on the ground in parksville bc and uh we'll kind of go from there but yeah that kind of that's kind of all i want to say about that situation uh once again it's the same thing with the strike situation we don't want that to overshadow them winning but it is a topic to talk about. Like it, it, you got to do both. We, we're going to we're going to celebrate the fact that you know since 2013, let's get it, Canada mix. Come on. But there's also this like cloud here. Yeah, agreed. Can you send us to your neck of the woods and talk about what went down in the Northeast? Because some drama. We love it. Like good drama. Good drama. Yeah. Shout out to the um, people in my former uh, place of residence, Toronto, Ontario. No one believed in you. Let's just say that because predictions, deep look, they were saying it's going to be Pony, obviously, first bid in open. And then it's going to be Dig. Dig had a good season. It's going to be Dig. But Goat says, no, no, no. We're going to change it. But this is how they got there. They actually lost to Dig in the first place semis, which puts you in the back door with two bids. They beat Sprout, a good team. Come on. Sprout's a good team. I mean, they lost to the tire Biz Frizz at some point. Sprout did. But Sprout's still a good team. Love tire biz for his. Fortunately, they do not get a bid. They beat Big Wrench and they get to the game to go. They beat Dig in the game to go. And there's a there was a video uh, circulating. Wilkie Lewis, shout out to you. Basically skying two defenders for the win. And uh you're going to nationals. And and for Dig, you lose in the final, I believe, to by one. Gonna be editing that game soon to Pony. Then you lose a goat. So you do my favorite saying, which is the lose, lose, see. Ya. I stole that from Charlie Eisenhood there, but it's you lose in the final, and it's tough because you're going hard, and it's a close game, so clearly it's warranted. But could could there be tired legs, minds? I don't know. And then they lose to goat. So, and this is the biggest cliche. I know people are gonna take their heads when I say it, but it's like it's hard to beat the same team twice in a tournament. That's just true because you gotta play them again, and it's just like this mental thing. I don't know, Danny. You can speak to that. Well, yes, it is hard to beat a team twice. Everyone always says that. But the thing about this exact situation and why it comes up so frequently is because you put everything into winning this final. 
Because if you score that last point or you win it or whatever, you're done and you clinched a bid. So all your energy goes out into this game. You lose. So you're heartbroken. This team has just, below you, has been building. They've been winning. Things have been clicking. They're feeling good. Those are two very different energies to go into a bid, like a game to go. So like, even though on paper, Dig is a stronger team than Goat, they've been performing better, they were in the top 10 in Ulti World, that kind of situation is the exact situation where that team is going to go down. And that's why you have to make that decision in that final game. Do you, do you go for it against Pony? Or do you rest a little bit? It's risky both ways. We've seen both of those things turn either good or bad, depending. Interesting factoid that I learned today. Goat, by beating Dig, knocked out an open team. This is the first time an open team from Boston hasn't made nationals since the 70s. Wait, was that? That was on Deep Look, wasn't it? Yeah. That's a crazy fact, the actually. 70s. Boston Open is like a legit deal, as we know. Because they were Iron Side before, and then they kind of switched to Dig. Yeah, but they had DOG kind of obviously... before that, yeah. Yeah, so Goat. Who knew? Yeah, you're breaking hearts you over did, there. maybe. Yeah, well, they, they believe, for sure. Yeah. Uh, two other Canadian teams there so that, of note that I'll talk about before we head over to women's and, and mixed here. So Phoenix, uh, you lose to Dig 15-5 in quarters. Not really close, but, um, you know, tough when you're playing a strong team like Dig. You lose the Lantern right away in the backdoor bracket or backdoor round two, whatever they call it. But they went out to get nine. So love that. This is something I don't love, and I'm going to gripe about it on the pod. The results aren't even updated. Even now, from like that weekend, I actually, the only reason why I know they came in ninth is because I talked to someone from the team. So we got to figure it out. I know this was something on the Ulti World Discord. Yeah. The results were like two, three rounds behind. It was like, I'm trying to, we're trying to, people are trying to keep up, trying to get the post going on, on the Ulti World site of who's making the nationals. And it's like two, three rounds behind. I know there's volunteers. I get that. Thank you for volunteering, all the volunteers out there. But Especially for regionals, there's got to be a way to like make the updates a little bit more faster so that people can get the news. Like, I don't want to find out like four hours later who made it when it's already happened, you know? So uh, that's my only gripe. Um, Red Circus loses to Goat in the quarters um, and they finish 11th. They actually lose to Phoenix um, in kind of the semis of Ninals, from what I'm told. Once again, it's not updated, so could could be (laughs) fake. I don't know. Could be fake news. But Red Circus and Phoenix, these were two teams that were like, I believe in 2019, because they didn't compete in 2021. In 2019, like both of them were like fifth, sixth in the region, like really close. So both teams dropping a little bit here. So don't call it a trend just yet, but we'll see how they do in 2023. But uh, clearly other teams in the region picking things up. Well, Phoenix was missing Jeremy Hill because he was getting married. So big loss. Hey, congrats. Congrats to you for getting married. There's another, uh, I know another person on Phoenix, Paul Renault, was married the week before. So I think, I think he was out there for Phoenix. So got married and then say, hey, I'm just going to play a tournament the next week. Let's get it. Maybe that was their honeymoon. That sounds like a honeymoon Ari and I would do, to be what, honest. Sort of like Devon's, Massachusetts for regionals. <laughs> and like, yeah, that sounds very romantic for sure. Yeah. Speaking of romance, let's head over to the women's division. We have two powerhouse teams battling it out for these two bids. What What's cool about this this region, though, is that there are two, what will you say, favorites to take those bids. But then there's quite a few teams underneath them that are upset worthy. So I think that this region was really exciting going into the weekend. So Sixers had going to go to San Diego, going to see them there. We were uh, unsurprised, I guess, with that. But it didn't go exactly as as we all had predicted. So they go 2-0 in pool play. They defeat Bent from New York in semis, but they end up losing to Brute 13-12 to in finals. So a lot of people were a little bit hit or miss with this Brute squad team as of late because they didn't perform very well at Pro Champs. Their roster was a little bit different, but they added Levka from Germany, World Games, and things just seemed to be clicking. So they ended up taking the number one bid out of the region. So Sixers then had to play against Bent again and ended up overtaking them 15-12 and got their bid. So to speak about other Canadian teams, 
Iris gets all the way to the second place semis, but they end up losing to Bent 15-12. Bent's a strong team. They have a lot of really, really talented players. When we played pick them, we were... And, and international pickups, yes, exactly. Yeah. So it shows, it's just an indication that they are close in that region. As we said, one of those teams, kind of like upset-worthy teams um, that are right there. And they also ended up beating Siege, and Siege is a very strong team. Again, one of those teams that we thought potentially could do an upset. Moving on to mixed, Union had to play Sprocket first thing, and then they lost. So again, these like first round intense games is tough. So they also lose to the League of Shadows 12 to 9. So they end up dropping down to the 13th place semis. They ended up beating Zero Strategy, which I freaking love that team name. <laughs> it's very mixed ultimate. Um, and they end up holding seed coming in 14th. Theo. Do you like the name Zero Strategy? <laughs> it's not as good as Boston Practice Squad. Let's just be honest. Boston that, Practice that is Squad, so funny. That was such a good story. Uh, for those who don't know, it was basically players from the Boston area that were, I guess, like on practice squads for like Sprocket and like Wildcard and Slow. They all got together, made a team, did well at sectionals. I don't think they did as well as probably people would, would want at mixed regionals, but still a fun team. Uh, yeah, Union just, you know, tough game when you have to play Sprocket first thing. Got to play a, a fellow Canadian there in Brenton Tan, but. Um, yeah, tough and and kind of you hold seed fourteenth. Um, Union has the tools in place to to try to compete, but that region is just really difficult. Let's just like be straight up. Like, exist is out there. Sprocket didn't make it, if I'm not mistaken. Correct? Like, they they didn't even make it because exist took the bid, right? Yeah, is that right. And like the there's some weird like the Chad Larson experience made it. There's just like some. North Central, funny. baby, Iowa's own, CLX, come on. <laughs> they they had a really funny post. I think maybe I'll share it with you later, Theo, but it's like the person who's like spraying the champagne and it looks like he's like, he's like wild. He like won some sort of championships and it keeps zooming out. And then it's like them on the third place podium, like just like going crazy. Anyways, total tangent. In other news, D1 is starting to take shape. So we're going to be covering that now. So before we even get there, congratulations to all the teams that qualified for San Diego. For all the teams that didn't make it this year, take a little bit of a rest and hit the gym, start training, because next year I want us to double the amount of teams that go to USA Nationals because it bothers them that we go to their Nationals. So It, it really bothers it. them when we steal the bids. Like, let's, that, like, True. It's a tale no of No one's mad at traffic. Time. Yeah. Go steal the that bid. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. a tale as old as time itself actually you know what that is true because like furious didn't earn a bid but like maybe people would be more upset although they were really close they were like the the first team to not get a bid but like if like traffic and, and sixers no one's upset that we're there we earn those bids but for mixed i i yeah i get it i think you should have to anyways we talked about this on another podcast you should have to go to qualifying tournaments or go to any american tournaments and have a ranking yeah, Go did go. I mean, they just didn't earn it because they lost to the second best team out of the Great Lakes, Omen. Omen has yet to play their region, so they might actually not make nationals. We don't know. Coming up this weekend, yeah. um, there's some other contenders in there. So, Omen, are they going to keep the bid? Uh, we'll find out. We not will a find US out. podcast, like I said. So, D1, as I said, starting to take shape. Two teams per division have now been settled, so... Theo, you are kind of all up in this business. You're kind of following along with Steel Town. Can you break it down for us? Well, first of all, I got to say, McMaster, you keep proving at least me wrong here. Yeah, win another turn. Like, let's go. Like, come on. So we're not going to say every game, of course. I'm just going to tell you some notable results. Obviously, the noble one being McMaster wins. They actually lose a crossover to Queens, which sends them into the quarters. But hey, you get out of the quarters. You beat Waterloo. Then you beat U of T, uh, missing a few players due to regional. So uh, that's a caveat. They beat them 9-6. And then they defeat Queens in the final 10-6. So Queens comes in second, U of T third. Both teams will be at Easterns this weekend, which we'll be previewing in the main event. And uh, I think those teams will be contenders for the bid out of uh, that tournament. 
Big surprise, a nine seed out of this tournament. TMU, Toronto Metropolitan University, formerly Ryerson. Come on. You take down Carlton and pool play. You do lose to Mac, but you get all the way. You beat Guelph, drop a close game to Queens in the semis. Like TMU, you may or may not see yourselves in the rankings is all I'm going to say because you're killing it. Rankings will probably drop before this episode drops, but either way, I want to let you know that. Uh, gonna go on to open before I ask Danny uh, her thoughts here. Queens, you're proving the rankings to be true, at least for Ontario, being the best team from this area. You go undefeated. You had to beat some good teams in Guelph and Carleton. And you face off against Waterloo. It was a weird format where there were some like crossovers. And then it gets into these pools where if you win the pool, you're in the final. Like it wasn't a traditional bracket. Love the mind whoever made that. So in the one pool, uh, the opposite one of Queens, there was U of T, Ottawa, and Waterloo, and they all beat each other. Three-way tie. Come on. Toronto beats Waterloo 9-6. Ottawa, and these were like staggered. So like they can actually, since they're in the same pool, they all can't obviously play at the same time. There's only three teams. So each team can see the other like and what's happening. So Toronto beats Waterloo 9-6. Ottawa beats Toronto 10-5. So all Ottawa has to do is if they beat Waterloo, hey, we're like going to the final trying to get a bid but waterloo beats ottawa 12 8 and uh that's how the point differential works so waterloo gets to the final they lose uh carlton U of T tied for fifth and uh i'll give a shout out the best b team come on best b team in ontario right now queens b finishing 11th so we'll, we'll shout out the b teams out here in these streets I think it's funny that you said Queen's Bee because that's a thing, like a Queen Bee. Anyways, we love a strong B team program. It's so important, especially when the seasons are so short, to have a bunch of people activated, engaged, especially if you have a bunch of younger folks that are not quite ready to hit the ground running for CUC to get them still competing and playing in these tournaments is huge. So shout out to all the teams with B teams. We love to see it. So on the women's side, yeah, McMaster, they doing it. They doing it. I think that their team, like, from what I can tell, is just like, there's no, they don't run everything through a few stars. It seems like their whole team contributes. And so that's like a good culture thing. That's a good development thing. That's why they're strong year over year and they're kind of climbing. So really exciting to kind of see them having another successful year kind of back to back. In terms of TMU, like, what we love it when okay so your goal as a college university team should be to prove us wrong or to surprise us in a good way like you should have seen theo's face when he's reading that off he's like tmu what so congrats to you for rattling theo's world on the open side yeah queens it's just it's hard to beat them right now like they're their roster so star studded they're gonna be definitely the favorite for me going into the tournament so also, just like heartbreaking that three-way tie. I've been on like the losing end of that, been on the winning end of that. It's tough. It is tough. Yeah, all I'll say is we got some chirps in the comments. I know, you know, we posted, hey, we're going to move you up in the rankings. And someone wrote, you should have just put them high in the first place. And another person wrote, uh, you're sleeping on Mac Women's Ultimate because they took silver last year and they haven't been outside the top six since at least 2013. So clearly we're sleeping on them a little bit. Um, so McMaster, you keep doing what you're doing here. Uh, we'll see you this weekend. There was also a one day qualifier for Quebec. Um, and the results are the same as the preseason tournament. So university of Montreal, they qualify. They're still the number one team out of Quebec, in my opinion. Well, clearly the results show that they beat Laval 11, nine, uh, Laval gets second, but will not be at Easterns. So what that means is they'll be trying to get a bid on Friday. So We'll see what happens there. I think they have a good team. I think they can do it. And then speaking of Easterns, McGill will be there um, from what I've been told by a resident fact checker, the only Quebec team going. So McGill, chance to get a bid, but McGill, you're sliding. You're sliding a little bit here. I, I was high up on, on this McGill open team, but they are sliding and hopefully they can prove me wrong uh, at Easterns is all I'm saying. Do you know why Laval isn't going? I was told by our resident fact checker that I 
said before, um, that a lot of the Quebec teams don't often go to Easterns. It, it seems like there's just something they don't do. I know McGill does, but some of the other teams don't. So I know Concordia has gone in the past some other teams, but I believe Sherbrooke's not going as well. So uh, based on the schedule that I've received, um, so it looks like, yeah, some of the, those Quebec teams are just not going. So staying home. Okay. It's, it's two tournaments in a row. I mean, I get it, but it's a short season. So my opinion is you should tr- try to play it if you can, you know? Yeah. Um, okay, what's happening in the women's division? Women's division, it's Laval again. I mean, it's not, it's not uh, 15-3. Let's just say that. It's not 15-3. They actually only beat McGill by one. Mm-hmm. Uh, McGill was missing, I believe, uh, Nina, because she would have been playing for Iris unless she decided to stay back and play with McGill. But 11-10, close result. McGill still fighting for a bid at Easterns. I'm going to put out a bold prediction, and, and the other Quebec women's teams can prove me wrong, but I don't think a team other than McGill from Quebec is going to make it to Div 1. That's my prediction. I think I'm, maybe I'm too Ontario homer here, but I think the other bids are going to get scooped up by Ontario teams. Spicy. Yeah, I think that this tournament being the same weekend as regionals definitely impacted some of the performances. Um, definitely excited to see kind of how Easterns falls down or plays out rather because that's going to set up our bracket. So let's head over to the main event because we're going to be doing regional qualifiers preview. There's tons of stuff happening. We're going to be talking about all the different regions and all the events that are coming up to qualify for nationals. This episode has been brought to you by VC Ultimate. VC Ultimate has been producing custom uniforms and performance apparel right here in Canada since 1998. VC's sublimated gear is made from 100% recycled FlexLite fabric and design services and product samples are both free. Get your VC jersey today. This is Mike Haddock, founder of Haddock Sport Performance and strength and conditioning coach for Ultimate Canada. And you're listening to the Huck and A podcast, your coast to coast guide for all things Canadian Ultimate. Welcome to the main event. Lots of regional events happening this weekend. So we're going to start in my neck of the woods at CWUUC. Do people actually say that? Uh, no, so I don't. Walk? We call it Westerns. We call it Westerns. Yeah, yeah. Like I was like, no one calls it Sawak or whatever. Sawak? No, it's Westerns. So in the open division, only UBC and UVic are going for bids. So traditionally random teams get created to make it a better tournament for these teams to enter into so you'll see like a juniors team or sfu and friends or uh, an alumni team kind of get created so you're predicting a ubc win i'm also predicting a ubc win uh ubc alumni team is going to be also going so they're going to get lots of fun games um i hope and you also hope that UVic does go to Div 2 to try to, or to qualifiers rather on the Friday and then to play Div 2 or Div 1, depending on how that goes. So UVic men and UVic open team rather, they're consistently beating UBC, it seems. Like at like Douglas Bowl and, and stuff like that, like it does seem like they know how to upset UBC, even though I would say UBC at this point is a favorite with the roster that they have. So It'll be exciting to see. In the women's side, there's going to be one pool of four. So UVic is the only team that is wanting to go to nationals. So they're going to be getting the bid. So how they do will kind of impact our rankings pre-tournament. So they're going to be playing against Moist Clips. So that's... What is that? I was going to ask. Okay. You. So when Mischief played in like the VUL as a team, they called them like... And the year before, they called them moist Jeff because I think people don't like saying moist, I, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. And so now it's like an Eclipse team. So they kind of mixed the teams together. So they're sending a juniors team, essentially. So um, I don't really know what other teams are going to be playing. Um, maybe UBC B potentially will be going. Uh, but we both predict that UVic is going to come down with the win. Now, this next region, CPUUC, what do you, puck. Do you call that, like, prairies? Yeah, it's prairies. It's prairies. Prairies. Prairies, prairies okay. Prairies. Huh. So, on the open side, there's one pool of six. So, there's a few players on our AFC from Alberta. Um, but can they compete with Manitoba? U Manitoba looks super strong. 
There are six teams going to this event, including a B team from Alberta as well. Again, love B teams. So we got Toba, Alberta A and B, Regina, Winnipeg, and Calgary. So I think Manitoba is going to win it all. You think Manitoba is going to win it all. Their roster is star studded. And Theo, you have a prediction. I think Alberta, you'll you'll make it fifteen ten. That's my prediction. Fifteen ten. Okay. Write it down. I think it'll be fifteen eleven. <laughs> Too slightly different. Like All right. That. On the women's side, there's one pool of four. So we have Manitoba, Winnipeg, Regina, and Alberta all competing. Again, hard to bet against Manitoba here, but I think it's gonna be an even more convincing win, as do you. What is your prediction, Theo? So my bold predict for this is that Manitoba will not give up more than 20 points in pool play. So they'll have they'll have 45 to 20 point diff, putting them at 25 point diff. That's my that's my prediction. And if a team beats Manitoba, like come on, you're making me eat my words. Like let's go. Yeah, I think they're gonna slay the competition, to be honest. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna see what happens. But the the big tournament this weekend, I know once again, it's gonna sound like I'm a homer here, but you're not. The other ones are like little baby tournaments yeah, with like this random is, this B teams tournament. and stuff. Yeah, this is a big tournament. Easterns, come on. Bids are at stake. You got your top four seeds, you got McMaster, you got Queens, you got U of T and McGill. All those teams I'm convinced are gonna go D one. I think the pools are gonna go to chalk based on what I see on the schedule. I wanna highlight a couple Big games to watch out for Ottawa Queens specifically. Um, two five seeds in the tournament, and I think Ottawa can give Queens a game. So this could be a little bit of a shocker potentially. Also, this is a game I'm really looking forward to, which is going to be TMU versus McGill. McGill has not been able to beat Laval, at least from the results we've seen. TMU had a good steel town. Was it a fluke, Danny? Was it a fluke, or are they going to prove they're the real deal by beating McGill? That's what we're going to find out. Um, my picks quarterfinalists are going to be uh, Queens and TMU. And these are the matchups McGill, Ottawa, Mac, Guelph, Toronto, and Waterloo. And then in the semis, I have Queens defeating Ottawa. And I was hyped. I, I said McMaster, gonna prove, they're going to have to prove me wrong again because I'm picking against them again. Theo, what are you doing out here? You're going to pick against McMaster again. The Hamilton folks not going to like me, but I'm going to pick Toronto to defeat Mac. And then I'm going to pick Toronto to win and get a bid. Danny, do you agree? Is Toronto going to win? Or maybe Queens? Or maybe it's Big Master and I was just wrong this whole time. Yeah, I mean, I I guess I agree with your quarter finalists. I, I do want to see Mac in the finals. Is there a way that that can happen where Toronto is also in the finals? I mean, there's some weird, like, things have to shift. I think part of that is because I had Queens beating Mac in a crossover like they did at um, Steel Town. So I think if Mac beats Queens in that crossover, then, yeah, they would meet in the final. So there you go. You would have it your way. Yeah, so I would maybe say Mac, Toronto, but I do have Toronto winning. I think I'm really hyped up on this this two team. I think that they're really strong. Not that I don't think Queens and, and Mac are also strong, but I think that they seem to be a bit deeper um, from what I can tell from looking at their rosters, but we'll know more after this weekend. You get your Sixers players back and you added some of the top recruits there from your neck of the woods and some others. That's going to add a good formula and help build not just for now and the future. I know they're missing. They're going to be, they've graduated a couple heavy hitters here, like a Reeve Chan and, and Bridget Sandals and things, but I still got from what we saw on the roster, Jordan Marin coaching. So, Still bringing that knowledge, bringing that Sixers knowledge. Help coach them to a victory there last year as well. So expect good things from U of T, and that's how we see it. So if another team wins, once again, feel free to tag us in content. Denny, I kind of always got to plug the Instagram. We are mere followers away from the hashtag 2K. I think we're four away now. I don't even know. We promised a cameo or something. That's still on the table. A virtual autograph. Come on, that's better than a real one that's mailed to you. So get on the Instagram. That's my little spiel here. Open division. Our resident fact checker slash ultimate canvas schedule maker. Like, I don't know, folks, if you had a chance to check out this bracket. Danny, I know you've seen this bracket. 
it's very interesting because there's like 16 teams, but then there's also like teams kind of like there's more than 16 teams, but there's like a pre quarters. There's like a play in to get to the pre quarters with some of the B squads in there, but York's in there. TMU's in there. That's going to have to play in the play in. Same thing with Trent Ontario tech Algonquin. So uh, that's pretty fun. It's a pretty fun. Uh, uh, setup. There are some intriguing matchups I have that I that I want to note take note of. Uh, Western versus McMaster. That's a little eight nine matchup. The winner gets the privilege of playing Queens, uh, so that's always fun. Um, Carlton Laurier. Laurier was not at Steeltown, and um, I guess they've had time to rest. They were enjoying homecoming. I still think that's. Um, did I talk about this last time, Danny? About how it's ridiculous that a team decided not to go because of homecoming. Yeah, we did bring that up. Yeah, I'm bringing it up again because that's it's absolutely crazy to me. Um, homecoming is great, but come on, playing frisbee with your friends is better, at least in my opinion. So, Laurier, can you take down Carlton? We'll find out. And then uh, for for the Toronto Boat fans in the audience, this is a fun matchup. Guelph versus BB Flatball, 6 versus 11. Uh, a few boat players on both of those teams, the team that finished fifth at CUC. So, a little uni matchup with those uh, players involved. It's kind of fun. So. My quarterfinals. Let's get to predictions, as always. Um, I have the top eight seeds advancing, so I have Queens defeating Western in the quarterfinal, Ottawa beating Toronto in a close game, Waterloo defeating Carlton, and then McGill beating a good Guelph team. And then in semis, this is where it gets spicy here. I'm going to predict something a little wacky and wild because I kind of want it to happen. So Queens is going to beat Ottawa in the semis. McGill is going to beat Waterloo and head to the finals to play Queens. McGill, I got you losing in the final of the Queens. I got Ottawa fighting through the bracket, having to play a U of T and some other teams based on how it's written up. And then you play McGill in the final, and I have McGill doing the lose, lose twice. And they're going to have to fight for a bid at the qualifiers. Ottawa, I got you getting a bid this weekend. Come on. I... I mean, I was initially so hyped up on this McGill team. They have not been proving me super right thus far. So I think this is going to be a redemption weekend for them. I don't see anyone beating Queens, though. So I think them making it to a final would be redemption worthy. You have them losing out. So I'm not going to go so far as to predict that far into the future, but... I think Queens is going to win it. And I think well, I have Queens McGill, winning it. They're going to beat McGill in the final, and then McGill loses twice. McGill's going to lose. I both. understand. Yeah. I understand. It. I also have Queens winning, but I don't think I have McGill going lose lose. I think McGill is going to pull it together this weekend, and they're going to be showing up and not losing after they lose the final. We'll, we'll find out who's right here. So you have we'll McGill making it. I have Ottawa making it. This is fun. We both have. Toronto making it, but it's not over. The main event is not over because there's still another tournament to be had all the way out in the Atlantic. Um, CA, these names are killing me here. C A U U C. What is that? Like Atlantic. C A U C. Okay. So from, from what I've been told, eight teams saw the schedule, eight teams. It's a mixed tournament, apparently. That's, that's what I'm hearing. Uh, so there's D-Cut, Moncton, Mount Allison, UNB, which is New Brunswick, A and B, Acadia, D-Cut B, and UPEI. Danny, I don't know if you've heard of a lot of those schools, because that is just like way too far away from where you live. Let's just be honest. I mean, I've heard of Acadia. There you go. Acadia. So from what I've been told, Dow is the only team that wants to go. So they are going to play UNB in some big games in both an open and women's game at the end of Saturday. But I don't think it's going to mean much uh, because D-Cut's just going to go. Um, did try to reach out um, to D-Cut to confirm if their women's team is going D1. Was told that their open team is. Uh, just unsure of the women's team because, yeah, I'm, we just want to make sure we give you the facts. So to summarize, we're going to have a bunch of teams that have qualified after the weekend. So based on our predictions here, at least my predictions, I think similar to you, we'll flip it. Uh, for where Danny and I differ, but it would be UBC, Manitoba, Ottawa, Queens, Montreal, and D-Cut interchange Ottawa for McGill for Danny's predictions. So there's a lot of teams out there that are still 
could make it and are good. Like UVix out there, Waterloo, Toronto, Guelph, Carlton, Sherbrooke, throw them in there, Laurier. There's some teams that could get in. I think there's a lot more teams that deserve to be in D1 than not. And I'm going to talk about that in subscriber only. I think I'm going to fly that part solo today um, and just talk about why I think that division should be expanded because there's some good teams that are going to be competing for D2 is all I'm saying. So to summarize for women's, uh, we both predict the same thing. So it'll be UVic, Manitoba, Toronto, McMaster, Laval, D-Cut. If they take the bid, they'll get one. But there's some spots still available for a McGill, an Ottawa, Waterloo, TMU. Throw Guelph in there. Maybe even going down the line to York and Carleton. Carleton was in, our, in the women's rankings. Unfortunately, you're going to drop out. Maybe see them too high initially. But this is where they end up. So that is the weekend coming up. And then after that, it's tri- is it tryouts? The weekend after, right? It's going to be U24 yeah. tryouts. And then it's going to be University Nats. And then it's going to be USA Nats. Like, there's, a lot, there's a lot of podcasts like coming down the pipe is all we're saying. Yeah. I think what's cool about these rankings and everything is that this time last year, I knew pretty much nothing about the Canadian college series. And because of covering it last year, and because we have been talking about it this year, and I know a lot of juniors that have gone to these different teams, I'm actually like so hyped. I'm hyped to see like the qual. I didn't even really realize how big of a deal Friday qualifiers was. And and now that there's going to be like, really legitimately good teams that deserve to be in div one fighting for their lives on one day. Like it's insane. I am just so excited. So I hope that if you're listening to this and you're one of those college athletes, you're getting pumped. Maybe you're a little nerves, nervous, nervous is a good thing, by the way, it means you care. You'll probably play better. Um, it's probably going to be freezing cold and horrible. Um, but I, I'm, I'm stoked to see it. It's going to be a really good time. So Good luck to everybody in your training. Good luck to everyone in your qualifiers. Um, Just good luck. Yeah, well, I wish the same luck to the people trying out. I'm, you know, I've been trying to get the the down low, but I I can't seem to do so. So I will find out who's trying out and who's there if I show up to a trial. But if you can, is it open? Can you go to a trial just to watch? Is that allowed, by the way? Yeah. Yeah, of course it's allowed. So if you're in the Ottawa area, if you're in the Vancouver area, go check out the tryouts. Dates are on Ultimate Canada's website. That'd be kind of cool. Maybe you could report something for us too. That'd actually be really cool. So actually, that is that's my now pitch. Our pitch. If you're going to the tryout, reach out to us. Tell us what you saw. Take some video. Do what Khalif did at World Games tryouts. Document some stuff on socials. Tag us. Tag Ultimate Canada. It'd be kind of cool to see, uh, for those who have never been to a tryout, what it looks like. So um, yeah, there's going to be definitely some people that uh, are good that won't make it and say, it's always like that that's sports so um yeah it'll be, it'll be good to see and we'll talk about what happened in the qualifiers next week um and then we'll be getting ready for tryouts maybe danny next week can give uh, some final you know week of tips for tryouts like what you can do to take care of your body and, and mind and things like that so i'll throw that on danny's plate for next week this is shani crawford founder and ceo of discover diversity and you're listening to the Huck and A podcast, your coast to coast guide for all things Canadian Ultimate. Danny, are you going to plug the socials this week or, or is it going to be me again? Follow us on Instagram. That's where we do most of our heavy, heavy lifting. We're uh, Huck and A. Um, I just did a little story yeah, on know, there. Yeah, I know. talking furiously. We're, well, <laughs> that, that was just funny because you were just really excited. Um, but we are four follows away from 2K. Um, so super exciting. So Huck and A on Instagram. We're on don't go to Twitter. We kind of do stuff on Facebook, but it's just basically cross posting. Or you can email us huckingaultyworld.com. We do get some emails. Exciting. We got an email at midnight saying on whatever day. I was thinking Sunday. Like talk about the red flag. Talk about red flag. Yeah. So clearly there was a there was a, a want there from at least one Huck and A audience member. Uh, we got ourselves right to the clock here. Danny's going to take off. I'm going to go hit up the subscriber only. Follow me there. <laughs> going to talk about why the open, or I think both divisions could be expanded a little bit. Make uh, Yeah, I'll make my case in the subscriber only. Otherwise, we'll see you next week. Uh, we'll find out if our predictions were right. If McMaster continues to prove us wrong. Um, McGill maybe proves me wrong. So we'll see you then. Danny, you get the last word. Final words. Peace. <laughs>